Have you heard of the antibiotic apocalypse? A time in the future where antibiotic resistance is the normal and we will again start dying from minor, everyday infections. Now this is not science fiction. The risk is here and now. We all have a role to play and that includes our pets. Hi, I'm Dr Alex Avery from OurPetsHealth.com, helping you and your pet to live healthier, happier lives. Now responsible antibiotic use is something that every one of us has to take responsibility for. We must all come to realise that misuse will result in the rapid development and spread of multi-resistant superbugs. But what are superbugs? Well these are bacteria, like MRSA, which are immune to the effects of some or even all antibiotics. Treating them with these antibiotics that they are resistant to is pointless and does nothing to cure the infection. Sometimes these infections are simply untreatable. The deaths these cause globally is on the rise, with an estimated 700,000 people dying from superbug infections every year. If this continues unchecked, then by 2050 it is thought that 10 million people will die as a result. This is more than the number of people dying from cancer. It's that serious. But how does this affect our dogs and cats? Well, they are just as susceptible to these infections, and the bacteria they carry on their skin or up their nose or in their gut can be exactly the same that we carry. This means that our pets may be the source of infection for us, or we may infect them. Now, as the problem of bacterial resistance has grown, there's been a major effort by vets as well as doctors to reduce the misuse and overuse of antibiotics. There are actually many conditions and situations where antibiotics used to be given, but they can be treated just as well, if not better, by other means. My top five examples of this would be simple diarrhea and vomiting, superficial skin infections, mild kennel cough and other viral infections, minor wounds, and at five, routine surgery. Now in more detail, let's start with simple diarrhea and vomiting. An uncomplicated tummy upset is seldom the result of a bacterial infection that requires antibiotic treatment. The majority of pets will get better in a couple of days with nothing more than a bland diet and possibly a binding agent or probiotic. Although at the moment, probiotics have been shown not to make a huge difference in their current form. Now if the diarrhea is very bloody, if a patient is otherwise unwell, if they have a fever, then antibiotics may well be used. In cases where diarrhea is an ongoing issue, then a sample may need to be sent to the lab to see if antibiotics are really needed. Right next on the list is superficial skin infections. If only the surface of the skin is infected, then antiseptic creams or shampoos such as ones containing chlorhexidine are just as effective as antibiotics. Deep skin infections do typically require antibiotics, often for three weeks or you know, even more. And any infection that fails to clear should again be cultured at the lab. Now something which doctors have been very good at telling us is that antibiotics do nothing to treat viral infections. If we have a cold or a flu, then antibiotics are useless, except in the rare cases where we also develop a bacterial infection. And our cats and dogs are just the same. For cases of mild kennel cough and other viral infections, TLC and possibly anti-inflammatories are all that's needed, not antibiotics. Small wounds are very common. After all, our pets love exploring and getting into mischief, so the odd scrape is just to be expected. Just like superficial skin infections, the majority of minor wounds can be treated with topical antiseptics. Keeping the wound clean and allowing the body's own immune system to do the rest will work in most cases and prevent or clear up minor infection. Now finally, after simple surgeries such as neutering, most dental procedures and basic lump removal, there's simply no need for antibiotics to be given either during or after the procedure. Surgery should instead obviously be carried out in as sterile a manner as possible and your pet's body will again do the rest at preventing any infection. Antibiotics should really only be used if infection is already present, if the surgery is going to take a long time, if implants are used such as to repair a broken leg, or in other patient-specific conditions. Now the old-fashioned long-acting antibiotic injection or the three-day antibiotic course after every surgery is a waste of time, it's a waste of money, and it's irresponsible use of these critical antibiotics. Now when antibiotics are needed, in many cases your vet will decide on the most appropriate antibiotic for that specific infection. Infections in different parts of the body respond to different antibiotics. In other cases, your vet may want to send a sample to the lab to check what the best antibiotic is. This is often the case when the course of treatment needed will be long, when the infection is life-threatening, or where the previous use of antibiotics has failed and resistance is a real concern. This test is known as a culture and sensitivity. The lab see what bacteria grow and what antibiotics they are most sensitive to. 
With this information, we can determine the best course of treatment for every individual pet. So this is all very well and good, but what can you as the owner do to help fight the development of superbugs? Well, it's quite simple really, although it may require your pet's cooperation. Firstly, give the right dose at the right time for the complete treatment course. Secondly, don't stop treatment early, even if you think the infection is cured. And finally at three, if you think that you will struggle to give a type of medication, then let your vet know there might be another option, such as a paste, a powder or a liquid, rather than tablets. Your vet team may also have some suggestions to help you medicate your pet more easily. Now it is only by working together that we will have antibiotics available to us in the future. A world without antibiotics is a scary thing to imagine. And it may seem like a single treatment of antibiotics in your dog or cat is just insignificant, but unless we all take responsibility, the antibiotic apocalypse is a very real threat. Now I hope this video helps you understand why your vet may not dispense antibiotics when you expect or request. After all, we all want to ensure that our pets as well as ourselves are healthy long into the future as well as now. If you have any questions or if there are comments that you'd like to leave then I'd love to read them down in the comments section below. Also consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on future content and allow me to continue to help you and your pet to live healthier, happier lives. So until next time, I'm Dr Alex from ourpetshealth.com because they're family.